Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Matthew Answers the Internet, the show where I troll the internet for all of those burning board game questions. And we together attempt to answer them. My first question, first question of the year is, so how did everyone's New Year's resolutions go last year? Not good. Not good, they didn't go well. I'm being honest with you and myself for the first time. My main board game New Year's resolution last year was that I was going to track all of my plays. I was gonna be diligent, hard working. Every time I played a board game, I was gonna track it so I got all this data which would actually help me do this show. It was a great idea, full of high ideals. But by about March, I was out. I just hated doing it so much. It took, I'll be honest, it took a bit of the joy out of playing board games for me. Paula, on the other hand, who's also here on Watch It Played, ding, she kept at it. She did it the whole time. Luckily for me, I play most of my games with Paula online or on stream. I, it was a good idea, right? And it's useful to have that information. You know, getting rid of games and stuff and getting games in, games out. What games do I love? What games have I been playing? Having that data to know, oh, what game at that convention did we play that was really fun? I don't remember what it was called. Having all the information is actually qu quite useful when you're so entrenched in the hobby as I am. I just couldn't keep up with doing it. Do any of you track your board game plays? I'll rephrase, do any of you enjoy tracking your board game plays or is it just a habit that you just can't stop? I do now, in hindsight, wish I'd have stuck at it, but I legitimately hated doing it. <laughs> And before we go on to the next question, we have the sponsor who in part made this episode possible. And it's Dice Manor from Arcane Wonders, which challenges daring designers of dream homes to dream big and create the most lavish houses ever imagined. World-renowned property developers Mundane Manors Inc. are tired of making the same old boring mansions, and so they turn to you to develop new homes that will astound and delight their customers. Over four rounds, players use their dice to bid for blueprints, earn advertising space, collect inspirational tokens and give early tours of their magnificently modelled manners. And the player who builds and markets their design the best wins. Dice Manor arrives at friendly local game stores soon, but a limited number of copies are available now at the Arcane Wonders website. So follow the link in this video's description for more information and how to find one of these early release copies. Moving on from last year's resolutions to this year's resolutions, because the next question is, what are your new year's resolutions in the board gaming hobby? Well, I tell you, I've got some new ones. I'm not gonna try and track my plays. Why bother? It's never gonna work, you know? But the, I do have one and that is, I need, not want, I need to cull some board games. I am surrounded. I am on all fronts. They're everywhere. I need to get rid of some games. I cannot go on like this. I have a very small living space <laughs> and uh, that means that it is a one in one out situation at the very best at, this, at the moment. And I have sometimes piles of board games just on the floor. And that's when I really realized that it was a problem. So my board game resolution this year is to shrink my collection, which I'm starting off pretty broadly because I'm, I'm doing a massive call at the start of the year. We're talking like 200 games I'm getting rid of. Gone forever. Never, that game doesn't exist to me anymore. And I feel like the culling is just gonna keep on coming because my second resolution is I want to play every game that is in my collection so that I know if I wanna keep it or get rid of it. That's why I'm gonna play them. Play every game I own with a mindset of, is this game good enough to stick around? Which is the decision lots of people have made about me in the past. And uh, I tell you what, a lot of harsh conversations. You know, that's what I wanna do. I wanna go through every game on the shelf. Do I wanna play Yellow and Yangtze ever again? The, uh, that's to be clear. I'm never getting rid of this game or this game, raw. Well, this game, this one, I have a problem. I love board games so much, but I'm surrounded. 
I wanna make some difficult decisions. And there's a few ways I can actually go about leaning into these decisions, right? The fact that if someone else I know owns the game, I can get rid of it a bit easier. A bit easier, not just my friend Sean owns, you know, Shakespeare, so I don't need Shakespeare. Of course I need it. What if I wanna play it? What if Sean goes away? Also, if a game is online, that also helps. If the game is online, somewhere to play, do I need it in my collection, really? So those are my two New Year's resolutions moving forward. What are yours? Also, I better, I better do them this year. I, I need to do them. It's a big, I need to do them. <laughs> what are yours? Let me know down below. What are your board gaming resolutions and how did your resolutions go last year? Two things I would love to know. The next question is what were your biggest game surprises from last year? 2022, what a year for games, but what were my biggest surprises? And I think that this is actually a more broad question than it, it needs to be. It doesn't have to just be what were the best games from 2022, because I'm not surprised that some games were the best games in 2022, because we all thought they were gonna be. But what were the surprises? What were the games that no one was expecting that creeped up on you and went, I'm brilliant, you know, what are those games? Those are the games I wanna know. Those games are so fun to find out about. Also, they don't have to be new games. What, it could be an old game that you played and you thought, wow, this is great. I really enjoyed this. It's still a board gaming surprise because the game's from 18 dickety six. I have a list of 10 massive board gaming surprises for me. So here we go. The first one is Comic Hunters. This could be up there with the biggest surprise for me. I have gone on record to say that comic books and superheroes and all that type of stuff isn't necessarily for me. I appreciate that lots of people love them. I've been playing the heck out of Marvel Snap, despite the fact that it's Marvel. It's, uh, it's pretty good, I'm enjoying it. But Comic Hunters, which is set in the world of collecting comic books, it might be one of the best games I've played last year. It was so fun. It's a game where you are, I've described it as modern art, the drafting game, because what you're doing is there's four different ways that you can draft depending on what stage of the game you're playing. Uh, there's three drafts per round, and then you sort out your collection. So you draft thematically. Sometimes you're drafting games from the board game shop or from the convention or from online. And the way that the draft works represents that. Also what is available, what rarity of comic book is available. And you're trying to collect sets of comics of the superheroes, uh, like sets of Spider-Man comics for instance, to get points. And the different things are going to be worth different values each game. So it mixes it up, the drafts mix it up. This game is phenomenal. I loved it. Like it easily, I would recommend this to anyone as an entryway game. This is the game you should play. Go play, you like comic books? Do you wanna play board games? Play this game. You will be a board gamer from this game. It's incredible. It's only available with a Marvel license though from Brazil. I have it on good authority. I can't say where, but I have heard <laughs> that it will be coming to a greater, wider audience. I don't know if the name is going to change, and I don't know if they will have the Marvel IP, but even without the Marvel IP, this game is really good. Comic Hunters, that's a hard one to beat as far as surprises of the year go. Next, we have Caesar's Empire. Again, that I played at the start of 2022, and then I finally saw someone else talk about it when Chris Yee from the Dice Tower said it was 10 out of 10. And I was like, Chris, we get each other. So Caesar's Empire is a route building game where you're going around, you're building your route out onto the map of Rome, and you're trying to get to different cities to collect tiles to score points. Lots of different ways to do, but you can piggyback on other people's routes. It's a quick, very lightweight, breezy, but thinky, strategic, fun game with great production. Probably overproduced, honestly, but it was a great surprise to me. Next is Wrath of the Lich King. Can you see it? No, because it's right, it's there. Doesn't matter. Wrath of the Lich King, which is a pandemic game. Again, another IP. I have no affinity for. World of Warcraft, cool, I guess. But lots of people love it, but I liked the game and I thought, well, maybe I'll enjoy this. I like Pandemic, why not go for it? And I played it, and I tell you what, 
it's it's my favorite pandemic i loved it i thought it was absolutely fantastic and the big surprise for me was how much i liked it despite the ip i was like yeah this feels great this feels like i'm going around slapping around bad guys and chain lightning and things and delving into dungeons and killing the lich king it was fun really really great game well the next biggest surprise for me was the fact that i love abstract strategy games i love abstract strategy games i've never seen an abstract strategy game have more theme than that time you killed me that time you killed me is is time traveling abstract strategy game where one what you do on one board affects what happens on the other boards so there's a past present and future board and you move something on in the past it might move in the future or you move something you know plant a tree plant a tree in the past and in the future it's a, a full-grown tree which might block people a, 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 block your opponent and you try to push them off the board but it's got a rule book that's legitimately funny in an abstract strategy game they knocked it out the park so far that you can't see the park anymore. That's how far away it is. <laughs> it's so good. And I thought I was going to enjoy it, but I had no idea how much I was going to love it. Next one, surprised everyone, came out of nowhere was Scout. Scout was a great game, got picked up. It started gaining a bit of popularity because Corey Thompson from Dice Tower News bought a bunch of copies, gave it to everyone at the Gathering of Friends. And then everyone from the Gathering of Friends, they all started talking about it. And I was like, a lot of these people are talking about this game, Scout. And they're all saying it's very good. And then I got a copy of it and I thought, wow, this is a very good card game where you are trying to ladder climb by building sets out of your hand but it's done in a very unique way because you can't move cards about unless you scout for a card where you can add a card to your hand it's one of those fantastic card games it got picked up by oink games which helped it but it also got nominated for the spiel de Jaris, i believe so it got some massive hype around it but scout lives up to it it's a really good card game and that one was such a surprise hit for everyone i think this next one is Yokohama, a game I played when I got into board games, really. And I didn't enjoy it when I got into it. And it was a bit too heavy for me, I think. And I was like, OK, that's fine. But it wasn't for me. And then it came onto Board Game Arena and I played it again. And I thought, this game's really good. People call it Istanbul on steroids, where you're kind of like almost Mancala-ish in a way that you're putting a worker out and you have to build paths with your, with your workers, your assistants. And uh, you can the more assistance you get in an area, the, uh, the stronger the action is when your manager or your president gets there, I think they're called. So you want to build up power in these different areas to do fulfill contracts, to get resources, to get area majority on some of these tracks and stuff. Lots to think about, lots of things going on, but I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed it the second time I tried it. A game that I played for a stream for a Kickstarter for a company called Inside Up Games was Draft Right Records. I like Roman Wright's as, uh, not as much as the next man, actually. I don't think I do. I, I like them, but they're not like my jam. But I played Draft Right Records where you are drafting. It's a music. The theme is music. You're creating this band which I think is a really great theme. The art is vibrant and alive. And you're drafting cards and each card like it represents a part of your board. You're trying to get your band. You're trying to go on tour. You're trying to harmonize. This game was phenomenally good. It was wonderful. I loved it because you just, it did exactly what I wanted it to do, which was pop off you did one thing which got your bonus another bonus another bonus another bonus another bonus it made you feel like a genius because it rewarded you for playing the game it gave you those drips of endorphins as it went on i think this one is one of the best roller rights i've ever played it's a top five roller right for me i think it was just brilliant but not just a roller right i think oh, i was top five roller right this was a brilliant game straight up i loved it so i'm looking forward to picking up a copy of this one when it i think gets a wider release when it's off that when the kickstarter delivers and stuff so i'm hoping to to grab a copy then because i thought this was brilliant and a music theme i think there's not enough music theme board games why not i like i like music there's my yeah, it's good there's a guitar there thus proving i uh, am musically inclined i can play it the next one is The Game of Why, a game that not many people have, but an old abstract strategy game, which is part of a, 
lineage of abstract strategy games where you're kind of root building you have this board with three sides and you're trying to get you're trying to connect all three sides to create some type of warped y shape and that's how you win i bought a copy from a company a wooden a nice wooden copy from this company in america had it sent to paula's house then when i went to america i picked it up me and paula played it i then played it with uh, nick murphy and we everyone just loved it it's beautiful production. It's the kind of game you would leave out on a coffee table. You know, it's just a gorgeous looking piece of art as well as the game. It's got go pieces, like the, the chits are like go pieces. I was, I knew I was gonna like it and I was excited for it. And it was, I just, it's just wonderful. The last two are Crusaders Thy Will Be Done, a game that passed me by, but I saw a few other people who I know are Amerithrash kind of gamers say they really like this Crusaders Thy Will Be Done game. And I was like, okay. And then I was, I kind of never got round to playing it, but again, it went to Board Game Arena. And I was like, okay, I get to try this game now. And I played it on there, I got destroyed by Chris Yi actually, he destroyed me with Addis. It's like, okay, I'm getting the gist of this. And it's a Mancala game where you're spreading across Europe, trying to have your will be done as you're crusading. And you're trying to build up your Mancala board by upgrading it. And you're trying to get your pieces and everything so that you can crusade, so that you can build to get more bonuses. Oh man, this game's fantastic. If you have a board game arena account and you like a good Euro or not, so many people who aren't into Euros enjoyed this game. Paula loved it as well. She likes all the games though. We just thought it was fantastic and I thought it was really, really good. A game that, that's a game that I would really enjoy picking up and getting a copy of myself. And the last one is Philosophy, which is another Kickstarter. I believe it was on Kickstarter. I thought it was on GameFound. It's a abstract strategy game, which I think might be one of the best games I've ever played. It's definitely a top 20 game, I would say, for me. It's a game where you are, we played it on Watch It Play, and you are putting your tile down, and your tile affects all the other tiles on the board. And you're trying to make a row of three by placing a tile in the middle section of the board, and then this tile pushes that tile. And then that might cause a chain reaction, which means this tile moves again. And it's a really thought-provoking abstract strategy game. Turns can take quite a while when you go, okay, how do I do this? Every turn feels like a puzzle to solve, which is really satisfying and fun. The thing is you might think, well, it's the t there's so much time between your turns sometimes. And sometimes games can be over in two seconds. Sometimes games can be over in 25 minutes. But the game ethos and the way that the game rewards you for thinking hard and knowing that you want your opponent to do the best move possible because when you win, it makes it so much more satisfying. And it's got one of the best tokens I've ever seen in the game, which is a respect token, that when your opponent does something amazing, you give them this respect token. It does nothing other than say, hey, well done. You just got out of a real sticky predicament. You, that was a great move, well done. I think more games should have a token that says, hey, that was a great move. I'm gonna lose now. So those are my biggest surprises from last year. Some new, some old, some ones we thought were good be good, some games that came out of nowhere. What were yours? What were your biggest board game surprises? What are those games that you went, huh, that was great. Hey, thanks everyone for watching this episode of Matthew Answers the Internet. I hope you're having a great start to your year and the year to come. There's lots of exciting things going on from what you played, some of which I really can't wait to tell you about, so. Thanks for watching everybody. Leave your opinions below and any questions you have that you want answered in the next one. And I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks everyone. Bye.